Now we're live. All right. Ooh. Fantastic. A very warm welcome to all of you here to today's session and webinar. We are very excited to be hosting a webinar about a topic that is oh so relevant, more than ever, perhaps. Um, so, um, my name is Sana Sama. I'm the founder of Mina Speakers, and Mina Speakers is a lead speakers agency in the Middle East. We provide thought leaders to different conferences, to virtual engagements, and one on one sessions as well, as a way to educate, engage, and empower our audiences wherever they are in the world. And so, um, at a time where, you know, COVID is still not behind us, and we're hearing a lot of stressful news um, in many directions. Life is taking a toll on us in so many ways. And so talking about stress management, talking about burnout is more relevant than ever right now. So I am beyond excited, beyond excited to um, be introducing the speaker that has so kindly joined us today to be sharing a lot of the knowledge that she has or some of it that she has and she's sitting on a wealth of knowledge she has a wealth of experience, highly um, accredited, educated, and it's a combination of fantastic and unique life experiences, but also very traditional academic experiences. She has uh, a stress management instructor certification from Paramount Wellness Institute in Colorado. She's an accredited resilience consultant from Nicholson McBride Business Psychology Group in the UK. She is in an EQ practitioner, she facilitates strengths-based leadership tests um, and has studied positive psychology from the University of North Carolina. She studied the science of well-being at Yale University. And the list goes on. <laughs> I'm just scratching the surface here. But not only has she done all of that, she's also climbed several high altitude mountains. She's attempted a solo swim of the English Channel. She's led several multinational teams of men and women on 61 expeditions. And we're talking some very challenging expeditions to more than 20 countries, including the Arctic and Antarctica. So please join me in uh, welcoming our speaker. Before I do invite you to give her a big round of virtual applause, I want to also, <laughs> I want to also flag for one thing which is we'll be hosting the session. And then after the session, we will be opening the floor for like some networking um, within groups. We'll be having breakout rooms afterwards. So stay with us the whole way. And then afterwards, you can all join these different groups and network amongst each other. Because we're here to learn from Jules, but we're also here to learn from each other. So please join me in giving her a big round of virtual applause. In the chat, you can do that. <laughs> and I will be passing over the mic. Julie Miles Lewis, the stage is yours. Super, thank you so much. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world right now. I know we've got people zooming in from around the globe. I'm currently in Dubai, and um, so on that time zone at sea level, no longer up in the mountains. <laughs> Haven't been up in the mountains for over a year now, actually. So when Sana was talking about all the qualifications of the academics, I used some of the downtime or the um, lockdown time to study more um, so that my head was getting bigger and my body saying I need to climb I need to climb I need to move so <laughs> this is a stress-free webinar so if you're somewhere where you can kick off your shoes and actually put your feet on the floor and ground or sit cross leg or just be super comfortable you know it's it's not a, a kind of a test at the end or anything I just really want you to be kind of super relaxed and enjoy it um, it's a great uh, opportunity to invest some time in your greatest asset which is of course yourself and I personally believe it takes quite a lot of courage and, and self-compassion and wisdom to to join any self-development or self-care program because you know we're usually very good at caring for others and then kind of nurturing others and then sometimes when it comes to ourselves, we think oh I'll just keep going I'll just keep going so give yourself a, a pat on the shoulder or a high five, you know, for investing an hour of your time in today's session. 
um, I'm definitely going to keep this more practical as opposed to the science or the, the medicine behind stress and, and stress management, etc. And when we call it with a screen, you'll see that the visuals are very soothing, lots of nature because I'm a, uh, a nature um, advocate and very little text basically so that you can just really focus on listening and, and jotting down a few notes if you wanted to. Um, we do have a chat box and San is very kindly keeping an eye on that and we will have Q&A at the end. Um, so, so that's the kind of a little uh, overview. Just to give you the backstory, um, because San mentioned, yeah, my background's in sports science, I've been adventure travels, et cetera, et cetera. And so everybody thinks, Julie, you're so strong, you're so resilient, you, you know, you need to just keep going. Um, however, at the end of last year, um, I was just feeling, I'm going to use the word frazzled, um, not burnt out, um, but just a little bit frazzled, not firing on full cylinders. So I decided to take a self-care break. So this is the self-love and the self-compassion to say, okay, it's time to take a little bit of a break. Now, I know we can't all go up to the Northern Emirates or move around and just say I'm going away for three weeks. But what we will do when we go through the session today is talk about some daily deposits that you can make into your well-being account across the day, wherever you are, so that maybe it doesn't get to the point where you think, I need to go away for three weeks. Um, so basically, the, what I'm going to share with you today are some of the, the tips and tools and strategies and things that I tried while I was in uh, Ras al Khaima that I believe would be very, very useful to yourself, uh, to your partner, to your family, to your children, because when we're firing on full cylinders, we just radiate lots of love and joy and energy and we can support others. But the first thing is putting your own oxygen mask on first and you can only give what you've got. Um, so I've created a program out of this, which we'll talk a little bit about towards the end. Um, what I'm going to do now is just um, share my screen. So if you just bear with me a little bit on that. Oh, no, we don't want that screen. Stop the share. <laughs> we want this screen. Oh, we have our first little technical challenge. Okay, so as you do that, in the chat, I do have a question because- I, I think we, yeah, I think we're good now. Yeah. Well, I'll just check in with everyone here as you set this up. So where is everyone from? Where do we have everyone from? Where are you joining us from? If in the chat, you can help me answer that. Which city is everyone joining us from? And oh, it would actually be useful to see if people can see the screen now. Is, is, are people able to see the screen? No, not quite yet. No? Try that again. Oh. So we have uh, Sharjah, the Netherlands, Saudi Arabia, and Jeddah, Nigeria, Dubai, lots of Dubai. We have somebody from Ras Al Khaimah, the Netherlands, Brazil. Oh la la, oh la la. Okay. Oh la la. Sana, did you make me the co host by any chance? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I think that might be it. <laughs> All right, we should be good to go. Oh, we have from England, UK, Dubai, and the countries keep dropping in. Fabulous. Well, I'm glad everyone can join us as we're getting this set up. Mm -hmm. Interesting, it's saying screen sharing is not possible. I will make you uh, host even. Also, you might want to think about on a scale of one to 10, where one is absolutely in top form and 10 is totally burnt out. Where, where would you put yourself um, right now? A 10 burnt out or five a little frazzled or one firing on um, four cylinders. Um, that sharing option.
Isn't it great when things work out on the test run and then you come to do it in the actual thing? <laughs> and it says no. Any joy with that? That's basically saying screen sharing has failed to start. Please try again later. That's not so empowering. Um, Sana, I think you have my slides, yes? I do, but you would have to give me a second and uh, sure. then I'll get it and download and all of that. All right, I'll be with you shortly. Okay, thank you for that. I'm not quite sure we have a little technical challenge, but guess what? We're all surfers in today's life, you know, that we try and control certain things and things we just need to um, ride the waves of change and surf with. So while Sana's um, pulling up the screen that I unfortunately can't for some reason, could do earlier, um, the first patch of picture was a, a surfer and it's really about riding the waves of change because for over the last year now, we've actually kind of had to rethink everything, how we live, um, how we work, how we travel, our health, our finances, our relationships, whether we're schooling or not, uh, homeschooling. And so that kind of, this is how we've always done it, has had to change and we've had to keep responding and rewiring and adapting and relearning. So that resilience, being able to build, scare, uh, build you know, spare capacity to ride those ways of change and just be present and focused and think, now, what do we need to focus on right now? What can actually be let go? So the analogy of the surfer, as opposed to having rigid control of something that certain things are out of our control, I think is quite a nice analogy. So let's have a little look about what actually is burnout. Um, in no sense of the word for me, I think it's really a wake up call. It's a sign. It's your mind and your body uh, telling you just to stop, slow down, um, pause, um, review absolutely everything that you do, your daily habits, your patterns, what you're eating, what you're watching, who you're hanging out with, and just having an overall review. It's, it's really chronic long-term stress in a nutshell. It's having like that toothache that is constantly there, gnawing away or chipping away at your at your well-being, um, overwhelming stress. Now it's quite different from stress because if we're stressed, we can still kind of produce, we can still climb a mountain, write a book, do whatever we need to do um, because a certain amount of stress is good for us. But when we're actually burnt out, then that's not the case. It's just whatever we do, uh, we're still not able to be as productive. Um, if we're overwhelmed, we can still turn up for work, but maybe we don't actually do the best kind of job. So it's really kind of this overriding feel or feeling of I'm not firing on full cylinders. Um, I, I don't have the spare capacity uh, and we'll come through some of the symptoms shortly. That it's just really that we're not getting enough what I call QRT, quality recovery time. So we have these intense periods or where we're juggling lots of things, whether it's work, family, uh, career, relationships, travel, finances, so many things that are taking our energy um, and how we're getting enough, um, what I call quality recovery time. So we have high performance, we sprint, we do what we need to do, but then we need to counteract that with quality recovery time. So we might be firing on full cylinders and keep going, going, going and taking on more, taking on more, not, not resting more, not saying no to some things so that eventually the, the, the flame burns out and, and we feel like I've got absolutely nothing left to give. Um, let me have a little look in the chat box. Did we have any one of those? We have some sixes and sevens and things. So definitely if you're, you know, anything above four or five, then you're definitely in the right webinar. <laughs> room. Um, now I've got one message. If Zoom is not working, she needs to step back out and come back in again. I'm happy to do that if Sana's unable to pull out my slides. Let's just give that 30 seconds. Um, how are we doing, Sana?
I'm happy to zoom out, but if we've got the slides coming up soon, I'm also happy to, to hang back here. Um, no slides, okay, all righty. I am going to go out and then come back in again, yeah? Okay, I am back in the Zoom room again, and let's just give this one more go about sharing the screen. Mm. I think we're going to get it this time. This is resilience and action, good people. <laughs> Working. Yay. Good. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. We have liftoff. Ha. Ah, take a nice deep breath in. Okay, so we've, we, we looked over the, the, the kind of the backstory to that. We talked about the importance of riding the ways of change instead of trying to control everything to actually be flexible and present and read the situation and be res resourceful and responsive. Um, and as we rethink absolutely every single area of our life, we then, Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes, perfect, okay. So we then just talked a little bit about what actual burnout is in terms of it being a wake up call uh, to stop, um, to pause, to review what are we doing? Who are we spending our time with? Are we taking on more than we can handle? Um, how are we thinking, eating, moving, sleeping? Have we got you know, healthy boundaries in place? Are we carrying a lot as if some things that we can let go? And so it's a little bit of a, a kind of a, a review um, of what's actually causing us stress and what's causing this overload and feeling from that bright, bright flame sparkling to kind of frizzling out really. So that's, I think that's where we were up to. And the next slide is really to talk about naming it to tame it, you know, what are some of the common symptoms? Some of the ones I experienced was I was just, you know, procrastinating, <laughs> not, uh, not firing on full cylinders. I was finding myself, I was being a little bit irritable, um, a little teary sometimes. Um, and, and just thinking, you know, I'm, I'm exercising a lot, but maybe I've got too many of the things that I'm carrying around and I need to actually slow down and actually drop into a rhythm of nature and be kind to myself. You know, self-kindness as a hyperachiever, self-kindness is really sometimes quite challenging and it's essential. So I looked at all of the things that were draining my energy. And this is quite an interesting exercise to do. If you just jot down uh, either in the chat box or on a little note, you know, who are the people or the tasks or the places uh, or the environments that actually drain your energy? Um, and I think it's important to be kind of quite brutal about this, brutally honest in terms of 
people, places, activities, saying yes um, to, to things that actually drain your energy and then flip it into what gives you energy. So it's easy to kind of be overdoing things um, and over giving. And I think that was probably one of my little challenges. And so I came up with a little acronym called Audrey and we all need Audrey. And the A was for awareness. And that's really actually saying, hmm, this is how I'm feeling or this is what I'm experiencing. So being aware. And then U is for understanding, to understand where is that coming from? Am I getting enough sleep? Am I getting enough time in nature? Uh, I've, I've, I've been able to say no to something so I can say yes to others. Am I staying connected enough or has I kind of gone into this kind of um, disconnected space? The D is then to dissociate. So actually step yourself out of that picture, seeing yourself as this, you know, kind of overrun, you know, juggling lots of plates, lots of responsibilities to then somebody who's calm, cool, collected, focused and, and dissociate from that and actually then reprogram and rescript and repicture yourself um, as you would wish to be. And then the E was the emotion. So naming the emotion. So I think it would be quite interesting if, if, um, if you're up for this to jot a few emotions that you're feeling right now or you feel you've been feeling over the last week or just over the last year um, in terms of what emotions you are feeling, whether that's uh, frustration, uncertainty, uh, joy, um, curiosity, um, Whatever you're feeling, um, you know, sad, angry, um, upset, irritated, or, you know, happy, uh, curious, um, loving. So just write down a few of these. And, and the, the thing about emotions, they're actually messages. So it's important to embrace them all. You know, it's easy to say, oh, just be positive, be positive. And, and after many years of kind of having a roller coaster ride with some emotions, through you know death of a loved one, a health chair, you know your uh, health challenge, and not for myself personally, but being the caregiver or business not going to right, then it's very very easy to say oh it'll just go away, just push it down. And I think it's important to actually express it, to name it, to tame it, and to say this is how I feel right now, and this is how I would like to feel instead. So the, the E in the Audrey is naming those emotions, embracing the ones that we think that's not a good or it's neutral or it's positive. They're all messages that are action signals for us. And the why in Audrey is actually to get to the yes instead of the oh no, it's to get to the yes, you know. So that awareness, understanding, dissociation, reprogram, emotions, emotionally charged, and then that getting to your yes. So have a little think about the, some of the energy drainers, some of the emotions that you're feeling right now. And if you feel um, up to that, please pop them in the chat box because it's very interesting that we're all kind of going through some of the same challenges, but we could be all experiencing it very, very differently in how we're feeling and what resources and support we have around us. So some of the symptoms I think we mentioned there was just, you know, headaches, tired, irritable, lack of motivation, you know, it could be overeating, undereating, some people have put, took, put on weight, some people have lost weight. And by the same token, some people have, have managed to thrive and flourish and they've looked at some of the gifts that have actually come out of this challenge. So let's move on to something. Healthy boundaries. And this is so, so important. So when I went to up to Ras al Khaimah at the end of last year, I set up the healthy boundary. I told my husband, this is what I need right now. And I just need me and I need space and I need to be by the sea. And I need to really just get into my own rhythm of um, not worrying about what's for dinner or where we're going or what we do, just really focusing on me. And, you know, I know that's not easy for everybody just to go and do that. What you can do is put those micro moments of me in the diary and say, that's the boundary. No calls at this time, no meetings at this time. Um, if it comes to family, it's like no phones on the table at this time. Um, you know, when I'm, uh, if I've got a deadline, then no, this is a no-go room, you know, for two, three hours. And, and actually, so it could be setting healthy boundaries with 
yourself and actually setting some boundaries for yourself about not waking up and the first thing you do is look at your phone is to actually you know go for a walk or make yourself a nice cup of tea and don't look at your phone till 10 o'clock um uh, is it somebody is it your partner or is it your kids is it your clients is it your boss to just set some kind of agreements in place um and say that doesn't work for me or yes that works for me and being able to say no so that you can actually say um yes to yourself and making sure that you have what I call me time and then we time if you're a couple or us time if you're a family and then outside of that now I know a lot of that is being kind of through the digital highway, it's been a little bit more challenging, but it's actually just making crystal clear your boundaries, what works for you, what doesn't work for you, and letting the people around you know that. Um, so there's no unmet expectations, which can cause a lot of stress. The self-compassion question that I ask myself every single day is, what do I need right now? And at the HeartMath Institute, I did a program with Greg Braden over last year. And uh, let's just try this because I think it's really a kind of a lovely thing to do. If you just want to close your eyes and don't worry, nobody's looking. I mean, we're all on video, off video, so that's fine. So closing your eyes, put your hand to your heart and just consciously slow down your breathing. So you're breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth. Breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth. And just by closing your eyes, cutting out visual distractions, slowing down your breathing and keep breathing. That's fatal if you don't, so please keep breathing. And connecting with your heart. When you do this, this sends the message from your heart through the vagus nerve to the brain, I am safe. And when we're safe and calm and relaxed, we make much better decisions as opposed to when we're feeling stressed, narrow-minded and <laughs> hyper-breathing. So this is a great little self-care tip. Whenever you're feeling a little bit anxious, overwhelmed, or you just think mm, a bit out of sorts, just close your eyes, slow down your breathing, hand on your heart. And after a few cycles of the breath, you literally just say to yourself out loud or mentally in your head, what do I need right now? And the first thing, and there's no right, wrong, bad, good or indifferent, the first thing that comes into your mind, then gift yourself that. It could be, I need a power nap, I need a cup of tea, I need a good giggle, I need a cry, I need to go for a walk. I need a cold shower, I need a hot bath, I need some connections. So if you're up for it, we're for sharing and caring, please let me know just kind of some of the things that are, are popping in in terms of what do I really need right now? And this is a great question also to ask your partner or to your kids when they're playing up. <laughs> it's just like, I'm listening, what do you need right now? Do you need some space? Uh, do you need a hug? Um, what do you need right now? Or what do you need to hear right now? So this is a beautiful self-care um, tip that's so easy. It just takes your time and your investment. Maybe Sana, maybe if there's anything that's up on the um, chat box, maybe you could share a few of those of people. What, what do people really need right now? Absolutely, so we welcome you to share. And uh, we appreciate your strength and vulnerability for those of you who do. Mm -hmm. We have at the moment different um, adjectives coming up. One, super. Somebody's talking about feeling frustration, overwhelm, overwhelm came up. And the need here is more human interaction. Someone yes. To go home to my parents. It's lovely. Yes. Someone yes. wrote some security. Yes. And uh, yes. one wrote my mom. Oh, yeah. You know, and the minute that we actually start, you know, that awareness tap into it, what is it? What is it that's really kind of making me feel a little bit off track? And actually saying, what do I need right now? It's such a simple question. It's a beautiful self-compassion question. And that's part of the naming it to tame it. You know, if I feel 
sad, what would I like to feel instead? I'd like to feel joy. And how could I feel joy? What would happen to happen for me to feel joy? So this self-awareness is absolutely critical. Let's move on to the next slide, because when I was, um, I mean, this has been all my life, whenever I felt, you know, I need to go out for a long walk to clear my head, and I've still not cleared my head, go out for another long walk, but I'm a huge advocate of um, connecting to nature, and I sincerely believe that, you know, most of our stress is caused by being disconnected from nature, um, so we spending a lot of time indoors, a lot of time what I call directed attention, looking at screens, whether it's our Mac or iPhone, this TV screen or whatever, looking at screens. And the shift is to be outdoors and what I call attention restoration, so that we've actually got the big picture thinking and we're bringing back some of that awe and fascination instead of tired eyes, tired eyes, what did I read, what did I read? I can't remember what I just read. It's actually a great um, quick fix to, if you can't get out into nature, you know, to have plants or to have screensavers like this that actually just bring you back into nature. And I do think that's one of the gifts that this, you know, the current health crisis challenge has brought that people are much more appreciative of nature about getting outdoors. Um, you know, people are going to the beach, going to the parks, having picnics outside, making sure well, I, they get their NQ, their nature quotient. Because this really, the science of this, you know, blue mind, you know, being close to water, green mind being in the forest, that when we slow down and spend time in nature and literally, you know, our senses, what am I seeing? What am I hearing? What am I um, smelling? What can I touch? Um, and, what am I feeling, you know, that sense of that? And maybe you can taste, maybe if you've got berries or strawberries or you're growing your own vegetables in the garden, that's a wonderful way to stay connected. So make yourself a little note in your diary, put NQ, nature quotient or RDA. You know, many of us are taking supplements and we say, I need to take my zinc, my vitamin C, my, my vitamin D and, you know, boost my immune system. Nature is one of the finest healers, immune boosters, very, very restorative. And I think anybody that just needs to slow down and actually reconnect to a more natural rhythm to actually spend time in nature is absolutely, absolutely critical. So if I were to say to you, when I, um, when I need to de-stress, I go to the dot, 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 um, pop in the chat box, where would you go? Would you go to the beach, go to the forest? Um, go to the park, go to a botanical garden, watch the birds, just to get a few insights. I mean, go to the desert, we are, we are able to go to the desert. I mean, it depends on where you are in the world right now in terms of what you can do and what you can see. Uh, but it's interesting to see what, what resonates with people, whether it's that flow of water or it's that greenness of growth or the flowers. Um, so let's have a few shares on the... Um, the chat box, because this is something that we can actually do for ourselves um, by bringing plants into the room, growing a herb garden. I've known so many of my friends now that are growing their own vegetables and lettuce and everything and go and picking wildflowers. And um, for myself, I have a daily dose in the, in the ocean. That's, that's for sure. That's my nature fix. What do we have, Sana? Yes, we have plenty of great answers. We have <laughs> beach to the mountains. Beach, yes. forest, someone wrote, I sleep, um, park, mountains, go to the beach, forest and mountains, walk around the lakes, get some fresh air, go around the world. And someone wrote, I miss the beach and sea for now. Yes. And uh, somebody wrote, meet different people. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the nature of other people, you know, it's very, very interesting. We're, we are social beings, so to go and do kind of sports or activities in nature, sit in the park with somebody or walk along the beach with somebody or swim or surf or, or, or hike or bike or kayak or anything like this, when we're moving our body and moving our mind in nature, it, it's, it's to me, that's my oxygen, that's, that's my vaccine. Um, it, this is so important. And if for any reason you're unable to, I would highly recommend um, kind of having pictures, screensavers, um, or listening to the sounds of nature so that you can actually connect to it in that way through all of your senses. 
So that was one of my tips. I mean, uh, where I was up in Masal Khaimah and when I've been leading expeditions, we get a huge dose of nature and then discuss it, you know, at the end of the day. So um, as part of the, the five week program that we offer, it's really um, that connection to nature is one of the, one of the big highlights. Now, now more than ever, it's really, really important to boost our self-care. And, and this is really about having multiple layers of action. It's not just exercising, but then eating a load of rubbish um, and not getting a good night's sleep um, and not staying hydrated, she says, as she picks up a little glass of water. So multiple layers of action. And it starts really with the mindset. So what, what are we thinking? What are the thoughts going around in our head? So it's almost a, to be more conscious of aware of what you're thinking. That Audrey, I'm aware, now I understand why I'm thinking like this and how would I like to feel instead? And then our words, you know, that I choose, I decide, I love to, I will, instead of I'll try, I could, I can't, I should. Um, but, you know, so even the vocabulary that we use impacts our, you know, our energy levels. So what are we thinking? And, and really, you know, journaling is quite a good, useful exercise to do too. That actually, I, I call it the power of the pen. It allows you to write down and, and kind of release um, some, so what you want to get out of your system. And it's quite interesting then at the end of the day or the end of the week to just highlight some of the words that are reoccurring or some patterns and themes, because you're just getting used to, to knowing yourself again. It's kind of self-remembering instead of running on autopilot and multitasking, it's actually really just coming back to yourself centered and grounded. So how are you thinking? How are you eating? And this is so, so important. You know, are you eating foods that give you energy that are light? Um, or are you eating foods that just make you feel bloated and stuffed and sugary and processed, etc.? And I think there's been a huge, huge wake up call uh, for everybody to be a lot more conscious about what they eat in terms of it fueling their immune system, their energy, their productivity, and their, their lifestyle really. Um, and through the five week program that I'll mention towards the end, uh, then we have access to a nutritionist that can really zone in on that because it's not a one size fits all. You might be in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s and beyond, and, and we're all very, very different. Um, so it's just really some solid basics in place. Um, and I'm not going to go into depth, that will be a whole new workshop and that's covered in the program in terms of the types of foods to eat more of or less of, even just something as simple as chewing your food. You know, sometimes we're in a rush, we're eating, we're doing, we're typing things out, we're hopefully not driving the car, but we're doing two or three things. And when you're eating, eat and chew your food and actually enjoy it and taste it and savor it as opposed to wolf it down and then think, oh, now I've got indigestion or, oh. So what are you eating? And remember, whatever you're eating, um, you're eating what that eats too. Um, are you chewing your food? Are you eating at silly o'clock at night or silly hours in the morning? Or are you eating consistently to kind of keep your blood sugar level and you're fueling your performance across the day? How are you moving? You know, I mean, I, I'm normally when I'm presenting, I'm standing up. I'm, um, I'm in Dubai as opposed to Abu Dhabi today. So I'm sat down and it feels a little bit strange, actually. So from time to time, I might just get up and wiggle my, wiggle my tush. Um, it's important to keep moving because the minute we just sit down, then our circulation and our metabolic rate slows down. So I would say every 90 minutes, take some what I call activity breaks. So you just literally stand up, do some arm raises, run on the spot, move basically. Now, movement could be, you know, walking, swimming, salsa dancing, cycling, kayaking, yoga, um, anything where you're moving your body because the minute you start moving your body, you tap into this internal pharmacy of serotonin, dopamine, anandamide, oxytocin, all these incredible feel good hormones. So if you're feeling you're sat at your screen and you've been indoors and you're just foggy brain, I just read something and what did I read or um, the words are not flowing, then get up, get out, get moving, some energizing breaths and we'll go more into that in the five week program to make sure that you're fueling your body for performance and that you're not eating at 10 o'clock at night and then going to bed and then, you know, not being able to sleep, et cetera. So thinking, eating, moving, and sleeping. Um, sleep patterns are so, so important. 
and to get into a regular rhythm. I'm very, I'm a bit of a stickler on this. I'm usually fast asleep, going to bed by 9.30, 10 o'clock absolute max, um, and I'm up at five. With the foggy mornings here actually in the UAE, I've just kind of thought, mm, I can have a little bit longer in bed and then I'll go out and do my thing in bed. Um, it's, um, you know, sleep is really important, six to eight hours. And the big, big tip for all of you is to make sure at least one hour before you go to bed that you are not looking at a screen or this or checking anything uh, that has blue light or is anything to do with technology um, because it really does um, impact your melatonin production. Really an hour or so before you get your due to go to bed, you need to be winding down. So it could be listening to some nice music, dimming the lights, you know, running a hot bath. Um, it, it just really to say to your body, I'm slowing down and winding down. Um, you know, when it's dark outside, maybe it's a good time to sleep, depending on where you are in the world, not at six o'clock. Um, but it's really important to get what I call good quality sleep. And we'll go into more details on how you can actually manage that uh, in the five week program. I mentioned earlier as well about staying hydrated. Um, it's so, so important. Often we think, oh, I'm a bit hungry or I'm feeling a bit lethargic and it's because we're not drinking enough. Um, so I highly recommend drinking plenty of water, putting bits of fruit in it, cucumber, you know, I put vitamin effervescent, vitamin C in mine and staying hydrated. So if you think, oh, I'm feeling hungry, just have a drink first and maybe you're not hungry, you're just really, really thirsty. And of course, we can all tell when, I mean, if you're feeling thirsty, that means you're already dehydrated. Um, but you can tell by the color of your pee, you know, if it's dark brown or yellowy, it needs to be crystal clear, it needs to be clear. So making sure you're staying hydrated across the day. One of the other self tips that I really practice as a daily ritual, and this, and this really was, it was almost you're having a checklist and you go tick, 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 um, was to meditate. Now this could be, um, to sound, it could be focusing on the flame of a candle, it could be a guided meditation, it could be um, uh, a, a mantra that you repeat, I am joy, I am love, I am strong, uh, I am focused, I am energy. And, and there's some great apps if, you, if you're not comfortable just to actually sit and follow your breath. And there's some, I use Insight Timer and I love the OM sound and I listen to that for 15 minutes every morning. Um, a couple of other apps that we'll share in the program, um, you know, to work through your energy centers, your chakras. This is so, so important. And it, it's, it's really like, you know, when your computers run so many programs and it crashes, uh, then we need to do that for ourselves as well. We just need to close our eyes and, and reboot. So even if you only meditate for five minutes, please don't do this while you're driving, you know, just to close your eyes, to focus on your breath. And, and, and ground and core and center yourself. Um, it could be through prayer, it could be through meditation, it could be through something that's kind of a repetitive flowing action. Um, you know, one of my prayer all of mine, um, you know, it's just something that's con continuous, reflective, re repetitive, so that you actually kind of really slow down and, and give yourself the gift of that stillness and silence. And usually for self-care, you know, are you disciplined enough to do it yourself or do you need an accountability partner? And, and with the five week program, we'll definitely be pairing people up so that you're accountable um, to say, hey, how was the walk today? Or how are you doing with your meditation? Or how's that, you know, plant-based nutrition that you're trying out? And how many glasses of water have you had today? So accountability is big on this. So this could be your, could be your kids, it could be your partner. It could be somebody through, um, you know, the groups that we'll be forming after this. It's just very, very important that we keep on top of this and, and make sure that we're building spare capacity um, because we definitely need that these days. You know, it's not just our normal everyday living, it's everything else that's coming on top, the changes that we constantly need to adapt to. I talked about um, joy earlier, and this for me, you know, is one of the, uh, the brightest, bubbliest, positive emotions, you know, to actually feel joy, even just saying the word joy. And, and when we're feeling low on energy and we're getting frazzled, it's almost as if the joy's been drained out of us and, and that we're taking life far too seriously. Um, we're feeling over-challenged or, or under-challenged or disconnected. And what's super, super important to do is to think, 
you know, what brings me joy? Because what brings you joy will give you energy. And we all need energy. Um, over the summer months last year, I studied with Dr. Barbara Fredrickson at the University of North Carolina in terms of positive psychology. And the positivity ratio in terms of five positive emotions to one negative or neutral emotion. You know, three to one is the kind of tipping point, but five to one is known as, you know, five positive uh, emotions to one negative or neutral. And we need, you know, really need to focus on that. So whether it's micro moments of joy and connection across the day, um, listening to some music, phoning a friend, lighting a candle, savoring a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, um, you know, walking barefoot in the garden. So these are micro moments of connection of joy. So think about the people that bring you joy because there are people in our lives that bring us joy. They light up, they radiate the room. You think, oh, I want some of that. Um, and there's certain places, you know, for me going to the beach, sitting by the water's edge, it's just so joy. That's all I need to do. I just need to be sitting by the water's edge. Um, different activities. Uh, is it walking? Is it swimming? Is it um, writing? Is it painting? Um, so identify, you know, the people, the places and the activities that bring you joy. And almost, you know, people create a vision board. I would say create a joy board so that whenever you're feeling that you're flumpering a little bit, you just think, okay, right, I'm gonna do X, Y, Z. So take a joy break, um, not a toilet break or a, a water break, take a joy break. You can take the other two as well. But this is super, super important to be able to recognize what brings us joy and actually give ourselves what brings us joy. So let's have a little bit of interaction in the chat room and jot down a, a few things, people, places, activities that, that bring you joy. And while we're doing that, I mean, I talked about the positivity ratio. There's also something called the negativity bias. So let's, let's make you aware of that. But, if five people said, Jules, you're looking great today. And then one person said, Jules, you're looking a bit tired today. Then the, the, the negativity bias of our brain would be thinking about that one person that said, oh, you're looking a little bit tired today. And you're thinking, oh, I look tired. And then you're going and check it. And you forget completely about the five people that said, Jules, you look great today. So this is important in terms of our mindset, managing our minds, our thoughts and our emotions. Um, to go, um, I'm currently studying uh, positive, uh, positive intelligence and we're talking about our saboteurs, um, which is the judge, you know, and the controller and the stickler and hypervigilant compared to the sage who's, you know, the explorer and the navigator, etc. So it's really a good time to tap into our sage muscles. What do we have uh, for joy, um, Sana? Yes, so sending the question back at your audience, who or what? Uh, brings you joy at the moment. I can tell you that my little baby girl brings me the biggest amount of joy. And Fantastic. we have somebody saying cuddling with kitties, cinema. Yes, yeah. yeah. you call my baby, babies, yeah, family, my dog, my girlfriend, oh la la, writing yeah. poetry, my cat. <laughs> Somebody wrote, not sure what it is, drone FPV flights. All right. <laughs> Friends and activities. So me time, lots of fun answers dropping in here. Excellent. And this is that awareness because I think for many of us, you know, that we're, we're managing a few things, we're juggling responsibilities and we're tending to work on what I call autopilot. You know, the program is from, from home to, <laughs> if you're working from home to the kitchen, to the bathroom, you know, that, that you're in this one space where you may be living, working, sleeping, eating, homeschooling, doing absolutely everything. And it's almost that, you know, we're kind of on autopilot and we have a routine in place so that we can get things done. Um, and that can actually start to drain us when that's day in, day in, day in. And, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning of this session that, you know, it's been over a year now that we've had this change trust when nothing is really going to be ever be the same as it was before it's going to be different it's going to be brighter it's going to be more conscious and, and more choice and then we're all making very very different choices now and the key thing is you know joy what brings me joy so that a minute you know I, I i get something that kind of turns down the dial on my joy what can i do to turn it back up you know one of the things i think i i didn't mention was 
about um, you know what drains your energy and I think following newsreels and <laughs> media can actually do that you know so I think be conscious or be aware of what you need to know in terms of current uh, regulations or anything that you need to be aware of but then please switch it off you know don't be watching the news at nine ten o'clock at night and then going to bed and expecting to get a good night's sleep or the first thing in the morning looking up and thinking oh this 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 and this it's just really you know I uh, digital detox add that to the self-care you know the think eat move sleep hydrate meditate journal digital detox and actually you know, break up with your phone um, and actually say we're through for today or this morning or until 10 o'clock. So, you know, have times where you do that and it's focused and then you kind of the, that balance of quality recovery time. So reigniting your joy, super, super, super important. Spiritual wellness. Now, this can mean so many different things to different people. Um, for myself, I think of spirit, inspiratus, to breathe life into, uh, to inspire. Um, and I really kind of think it's more around, you know, your ikigai, or the Japanese ikigai, your purpose. Um, so it's around your values, what's important to you. And, and when we're not in alignment with our values, that's when we kind of start to kind of feel out of sync and aligned. Um, our purpose and what are our strengths, you know, what are our character strengths? And this is all again about self-awareness. Is spiritual wellness for you um, uh, listening to music, painting, uh, drawing, writing, um, reading poetry, connecting to nature, to a higher po uh, power, a source? Is it your faith? What, what is your spiritual well, you know, that well that you go to, to feel fulfilled? And you know, living your values, I think, is really important. And my top value is my health and being outdoors and learning and growing and, and, and kind of making a difference. And the minute that I feel I'm not able to do that, then I, I start to kind of shrivel up almost. It's like my oxygen. I need this. Um, so it's super, super important to, you know, the joy, what boosts my spirit? How can I think, eat, move and sleep? And, and all of these little tips that we've been sharing along the way that you know I'm, I'm giving you the kind of surface the kind of things that you can do now um and then through a five-week program we dive an awful lot deeper and and, and a lot more kind of um self-awareness and really understanding and reflecting and thinking yes i can do this instead and this is you know this is for yourself it's for your partner for your family for your kids for your clients because when you come from this standing strong like a mountain but being able to flow like water and being flexible like the trees a nice nature analogy there then that's when really people you know it's this positive ripple um, throughout and this is so so important one of the other little tips that i had uh, which I had actually as soon as I started my own business back in 2003 was something called the power of three and these are really three stones which are at base camp Abu Dhabi and I'm in Dubai right now um, three stones that I have on my desk um, I actually keep them in my handbag I give them as gifts to people and it's really uh, that they're stepping stones they're positive anchors and it's what did I do for my mind today? So you do at least one thing and one to three things for your mind today. What have I done for my body today? And what have I done for my spirit of adventure? Am I learning some new skills? Am I, you know, doing something a little bit edgy? Um, you know, trying something new, uh, learning how to cook or learning how to speak Japanese or, you know, going on an online networking event when normally I tend not to. Um, so this power of three, so find yourself either three rocks or three crystals or three of something and, and keep it on your desktop. And, and when you do thinking, oof, feeling a, running a little bit low or out of sorts again, or, you know, not quite firing on full cylinders. Okay, what, what did I do for my mind today? Did I meditate? Did I read something interesting? Did I listen to some great music? Did I look at some beautiful art? Uh, for my body? Have I been feeding it good food? Have I been hydrating my body? Have I had a good sleep? Have I had a massage? Um, have I moved my body? Um, so this is just something super, super simple. Um, it's almost as if you could kind of create a checklist and, and we kind of do that in the, the five-week program that, you know, that these are new daily um, rituals. I'm not going to say disciplines because that sounds too much like hard work, but daily practices and rituals that become as automatic as brushing your teeth that you're a lot more conscious and thoughtful of 
how you're thinking, eating, moving, sleeping, spending time in nature, letting go of things that, you know, are not top priority, setting healthy boundaries, um, you know, and recognizing your emotions and naming them to tame them. So these have just been a few uh, kind of tips that a very practical, um, the, the program that we offer is, um, it dives a lot deeper and then uses different resources like visualization and, and, and meditation and practices whenever we can meet in person. Um, so I think now would probably be a good time um, to nip over to see if we've actually got any specific questions that I might be able to answer for anybody. So Sana, do we have any questions in the um, chat box at all? Then I think we're all enjoying your soothing presence, Julie. <laughs> Super, you know, and and you know, this is this is just the beginning. I mean, I'm saying again, you know, a huge tap on the shoulder and a high five uh, to you because most people think I don't have enough time for that, you know, and the people that don't have enough time need this more than ever. Actually, when people say I don't have enough time to meditate, well, you actually need to meditate more than the people that say they do have time. Um, this is actually an investment in yourself. It is, you know, taking care of your mind and your body so it can actually take care of you. Um, you know, to climb mountains, write books, run a family, manage a team remotely, um, be present for your family and, you know, be the best version of yourself. It's about daily practices and, and rituals that nurture us, that grow us, that, you know, we've got some resources. When I feel like this, I know now I can go and do this and then, you know, things are good again, or I can speak to that person or I can go for a walk or I can sip on my green tea and not, you know, glug it down. Or I can really enjoy my food. I can walk barefoot in the garden. And this is not rocket science. Um, you know, I think we all know what we need to do. Um, and knowing what to do, but not doing is like not knowing basically. So I think it's a gift of kindness and self-compassion to say, what do I really, really need right now? Um, so, I mean, if we don't have any questions, that's that's totally fine. Yeah, um, yeah. We will have it, yeah. And yeah. One, and it's been, if you could please repeat the, the abbreviation acronym, Audrey. I lost you there, Sana. If you could re repeat the uh, Audrey acronym, what does it stand yes, for? Yes, A, Audrey. We all need Audrey. God bless Audrey. A is for awareness. U is for understanding. So we're aware of something and then we think, oh, I understand why I feel like this because I only had three hours sleep last night. Um, D is for dissociate. So we want to change that vision, that picture, because it can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. If we're saying I'm sick and tired, I'm sick and tired, I'm sick and tired, guess what? You're going to be sick and tired. So D is for dissociate. So change that script, change that picture. The R is for reprogram or rescript or revisualize. The E is for the emotions, you know, does by doing this, does this bring me joy? Is it making me feel, yes, I can't wait to do it. Or is going, oh gosh, no, not again. Or, oh, not that person again. Or, oh gosh, no. So our emotional energy so that we can get to the why in the Audrey, which is the yes, you know, instead of, oh no. Um, so even if you just put a post-it note that says Audrey or, you know, have it written down somewhere, it's just a nice little reminder to, to actually stop and slow down and think, hmm, I'm aware of this. You know, Socrates, know thyself, um, you know, and then and choose yourself and gift yourself. So Audrey is a, is a super little acronym. So I hope that's very, very <laughs> useful for you. What I will, yeah, what I will do before we go into the breakout rooms, I'm obviously conscious of time and, and I know we had a little bit of a delay with the, the screen sharing, but my resilience, every single ounce of resilience kicked in and we made it, so that's great. Um, let's just talk a little bit about kind of keeping this positive momentum going. Because what I realized last year that, you know, the way I felt a little frazzled at the end of last year, it didn't just happen overnight. It happened over a period of time. And obviously the backstory is that, you know, my husband had going through stage four cancer. So I was the caregiver, my father passed away and my business was just not happening. So they were pretty huge. And, and so, you know, it doesn't happen bang straight away. It's over a period of time. It's like somebody's chipping away, chipping away. And then you think, mm, something needs to change. 
So it's important that you, first of all, you've made the first step today to make a change, to say, yes, I'll give myself one hour out of 168 hours in the week just for me. And even if you go away with one idea that makes you breathe more easily, I'm super, super happy. Um, however, as we all know, you know, if we're going to rewire and rechange and, and build in some new habits, it's important to kind of keep the positive momentum growing. So what we've put together is a beautiful every Monday uh, group that you can join and it will start on the 1st of March and then run every Monday uh, through the month of March. March has five Mondays um, where we will literally uh, connect once a week and that will be through the Zoom room. And we'll be in small pods of five. I'm very, very uh, conscious and focused that, you know, when you're doing this kind of work and exploring and navigating and, and, and creating something that works, it's better, much better in a small group so that we actually all get to know each other and become kind of accountability partners. Um, there'll be five modules at 75 minutes each. And the first module really about getting to know each other, where we are, what we're at and how we can most and how I can most support you. Um, ongoing support, because it's not just, okay, we meet once a week and then you're on your own. It's really staying connected. It could be through emails. If people are interested in a WhatsApp group, I'm happy to do that. Um, and, you know, if it's uh, possible, we could even meet in person in some places if people are, uh, you know, in the, here in the UAE, uh, when things kind of open up a little bit more. And I think Pods of Five would work really, really well. Learning resources. Um, I, I've really given you the surface, something that's super practical that you can start kind of straight away. Um, but during the five week program, there'll be different resources that you can access that will really broaden your self-awareness. So it might be a strengths profile, it might be um, a saboteur assessment, it might be a things that give me energy or the things that drain my energy or the people or the places. So that will kind of be ongoing and long after the five weeks because this is about building a community um, and uh, you know having people support each other. Um, this is not forever because nothing is forever as we've all realized and it's really, um, you know, we'd like to get this rolling from the first of Monday, we think it's, you know, strike while the iron is hot. Um, and what we would uh, love you to do so that we can keep this conversation going and I can spend more time with you um, is that we have um, a 24 hour offer to actually join one of the pods and we'll look at different times. So you, you would register and say, you know, nine till 10 would in the morning would be good for me or 12 till one or two till four um, in, the, in the smaller pods. And that would work. And let me add on to that. And people can say, well, how much is it going to cost? Because um, we're very conscious of that and we want to make it really, really accessible for everybody. It's normally around $1,000 per person. And we said, hey, you know, let's, it's where everybody's ready to spring into action and to really zone in and focus on this. And so it's priced at the super duper rate of 250 dirhams per session. And so we would love you to sign up now so I get to spend more time with you. Um, and, the, you know, the question is, what will it cost you if you don't do that? I mean, you've hopefully picked up quite a few tips and tools uh, to get you going now. And it's super, super important that, you know, the journey continues, you take, that you've taken the first step. So I'll give you a big high five for that. Um, and instead of going for lunch or wherever you are in the world or at dinner, um, maybe think, well, this would be a good investment. Um, for the long term, because when you invest in yourself, the, the, the dividends are guaranteed, you get a great return on yourself. That's exactly what I found. Um, so let's keep this positive momentum going. Um, if anybody's got any questions on that, we're happy to help you. Uh, but I would absolutely love to see, um, I mean, when you can't see people in the Zoom room, you just see names, you think, oh, I'd love to see everybody, their eyes and their energy and their, their language and, and, and really have a lovely conversation, which we can do because I think we're going to go into some little breakout rooms. Uh, but I would love to see more of you on a regular basis every Monday, um, starting from the 1st of March. So. Have a think about that and take some positive action. Sana, I'm going to stop my um, screen share now. There we go. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Uh, truly, yeah. this was oh, so wonderful. Thank you.
What a wonderful reminder this afternoon when most of us are probably like in the midst of stressing about all the things that we have to do, whether it's work, children, partners, whatever. It's just right in the thick of it all. This was a fabulous, wonderful break. And I can't yeah. wait to be part of that five week journey and just continue to learn and grow with you. I really am grateful for your time with us and for sharing. And um, thank you so much again, Jules. I want to thank everyone that joined us as well on this call. Yeah. Yeah. And so as we promised, we're here to also network. Um, so we would like to, first I'm going to say thank you to everyone who tuned in on Facebook and all of that. Um, and this 